Hi guys, it's Mrs. C. Just wanted to take a minute and go over week five memory work. Can't believe we're already at week five, but we are. So uh, we started out this week with geography as usual, blob mapped, and then we used a few um, pictures to help us remember the capitals of each state. So in Lansing, Michigan, uh, we drew a lance, uh, like what they used for jousting. Uh, and um, we drew that coming like out of Michigan. It didn't sail in there. So we just drew a lance for Lansing, Michigan. For Ohio with Columbus, we drew a ship like the ships we learned about Columbus came in on. For Indianapolis, we drew an Indian um, with the headdress uh, for Indianapolis, Indiana. For Kentucky, uh, we did Frankfort, Kentucky, and I had them draw a fort. I know I don't really pronounce it Frankfort, but it does have the word fort in it. So we drew a fort in Frankfort, Kentucky. And then for Tennessee, I could not think of anything clever for Nashville other than like gnashing your teeth. And I didn't really feel like that would help the kids at all because I don't know if that's an expression they have. So we just drew a big in in Tennessee. Um, so again, that was a Lance for Lansing, Michigan, a ship for Columbus, Ohio, an Indian for Indianapolis, Indiana, a fort for Frankfort, Kentucky, and an inn for Nashville, Tennessee. So we put all those in there and then um, I would say the name of the capital and they would erase the state that coordinated with that name. And we did that a few times and that went really well. Then we moved on to Latin. So for Latin this week, um, I made little cards that your kiddos should have come home with. I just cut up like these bigger index cards and wrote out the Latin words with the English words. And we started off, these are all mixed up because that's what we did, we mixed them up. But we started off just taking them and laying them out. So we would lay factum and then we put made next to it. And we would say them while we laid them out. So we would lay them all out. And once we got them laid all out, then we mixed them up and we would race to see who could get them done the fastest. Um, I obviously had looked at these a lot before, so I was pretty fast at laying them out because I was playing with them. So I would do things like give them a 10 second head start and see how many could get finished or um, only be able to do it with one hand or something like that. And I thought that was pretty fun. Um, they did a really good job with that. And that's something you guys can take and use at home. Uh, you can use all of these. Um, you could put all the Latin words on them and play a matching game with them. That's a really good way to review all of the Latin vocabulary that we've learned so far. So here's a nice set to start. Um, I will say, I guess when I was doing this last night, I was really tired um, when I was prepping. I forgot to make them a card for um, the English version of Mrs., which is sent. And they all know they don't have that one. They know that, that <laughs> Mrs. means sent. But if you get really confused and wondering where that one went, I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, after that, we did English. And for English, um, we are going to start to learn a lot of irregular verb tenses. And so last week, we learned all of our hand motions for the different types of verb usages. So we had infinitive, present, past, present participle, and past participle. So I, ha I got an agility ladder and for those of you who don't know what that is I'll show it to you really quick um, you can easily replicate this at home if you don't have to have an agility ladder you can use painters tape on the floor you can just put the words on the floor uh, you know just any way for them to kind of jump but uh, agility ladder is one of those things that like a lot of trainers use for sports but it's just a ladder uh, that kind of spreads out like this and we laid it on the floor um, and next to each of the squares, I put the um, verbs that we were using. And as they jumped in the square, they would say the verb, and then they would also do the motion for that word. So I had these, if you can see those, next to them. So they said the words in yellow, and then they did the motion that went with it. So they would jump in and they would say to be, and they would do the infinitive sign. And then they'd jump and they'd say am, and they jump again, are, and they jump again, is, was, were, been, being. So as they jumped, they did those motions and they said the words. And again, I had these all written out and they were laid next to them so they could kind of take a peek at what they're supposed to be doing. Um, if you do this at home or if you're a tutor watching this and you do it, um, maybe don't write this on the bottom because they kept reading the bottom word and so, so they would jump and say infinitive instead of saying to be. So maybe just put the um, words on there uh, and let them just remember the hand motions as they're jumping. So 
that's what we did for English. That was fun. Everybody got to get a little bit of energy out. And once they went through it one time, they all wanted to try again. So we got to go over English a few times today. Um, then we did our history sentence. So tell me about George Washington. And I had the sentence up on the board. We sang it through a couple times. And then I would erase words out of it and put a picture instead. And I actually let them come up and do a few of them. So I erased George Washington and I drew a little picture of him. And then... I let one of the students come up and she wanted to erase powers. And so she drew like a superhero with the cape and the wind for powers. And they have superpowers. Um, and then we had someone erase presidency. They drew the White House because that's where the president lives. And then um, the Constitution, we erased that and kind of drew um, just like a paper with some writing on it and like a quill. And then I'm trying to remember. Oh, for New York, um, they did the... They wanted to do the skyline of New York, and we wrote an NY there. So just kind of let them pictograph that themselves, and they um, got that one really fast. They were able to sing the whole song during review time, so that was awesome. Um, for uh, science, we did the five main senses. So we did hand motions for this, which this one's pretty easy. What are the five main senses? Sight, hearing, head, smell, and touch. So that's what we did for the five main senses. Um, that one's pretty easy. Most of them already knew the five main sense, sen senses. Um, just trying to remember them that it's not like seeing or eyes, that it's sight and hearing and not ears. Um, that's just something that we had to work on because they wanted to say eyes and ears, um, which is not the sense. That's what you use for the senses. So uh, maybe just make sure if you're doing this at home to really emphasize those two especially. Uh, let's see. For math, we had our nines and tens. And we did a lot of jumping because they were full of energy today. So we did our nines, um, wrote them up there. I circled some. They jumped on the circled ones. That's really a pretty easy way to do it. Um, for tens, we clapped because we were chanting. So we clapped with it. And then if we circled one, we would jump instead of clap. So we would have like jump. And when we said 10, 20, 30, 40, and we would clap on those. So that was kind of fun. Uh, and then for our timeline, we just went over our hand motions. Most of the kids know this part of the timeline, but it gets a little confusing with who's falling to who. So we did our hand motions to help us remember. So we had judo. So you're going to have your pinky up. And you're going to make a J, which is just like a hook. It's like you're drawing a J with your pinky. So Judah falls, make a B for Babylon. Babylon, the temple destroyed. So you're kind of going down and out like this. Um, Babylon falls to Persia. So you're making a P, uh, sign language P with your left hand. Persia, Jews return and rebuild the temple. Then you have Roman Republic. So two R's again, just like we did for Romulus and Remus, but this is Roman Republic. And then you have golden. So this is our sign for gold. Um, that's the actual sign language sign for gold, which is a Y, which is yellow. And then down from your ears, gold. So golden age of Greece. We made a G. This is what a G looks like in sign language. Greece. Peloponnesian. You take your um, paint your pinky, your pointer and your thumb, and you go down your nose because they had the helmets that protected their nose. So Peloponnesian and then wars. This is the sign for war. So it's kind of going back and forth like they're fighting. And then um, Persia falls. So again, our P for Persia. Persia falls to A for Alexander the Great. We just stuck our arms up in the air. So that was our timeline for this week. I um, think that was... All of New Grammar, it went really quick today. Uh, for our art this week, we did Perspective, which was really fun. The kids have just done a really great job this year with art. Um, so we drew a picture of the Washington Monument. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's my really quick picture I did as an example for them. So if you decide to do something at home to kind of talk about perspective, you want to make sure that you mention the horizon line, which is where the sky meets the earth. Um, and then you want to also make sure, which we erased ours, but right here in the middle where your vanishing point is, and that's where you can't see anything anymore. So uh, we did, obviously, the Washington Monument, and we also talked a little bit about how to make 3D shapes um, by either using shading 
or um, adding depth to them, which is part of perspective. So we practiced that first and we did um, a circle and a square and a triangle and then we turn them into um, a ball or a sphere a cube and a pyramid so this is one of mine you can see um so they've shaded their ball they turn this into a pyramid and they turn their square into a cube and we use that when we did our washington monument because the monument obviously is not um not straight it's not a complete square and it's not flat so we added that depth to the side so uh, the kids did a really good job on that um, we show you this one so yeah so they did a good job we drew our lines here to help us guide with the trees and our reflecting pool um, we kind of ran out of time to finish this today because it was fairly in-depth and some of them were having trouble kind of understanding the lines and where they were drawing lines and um, but overall they did a really good job so uh, yeah they did some shading on there and they all turned out really well I thought we didn't really have time to color today but that's okay so for science we did the we talked about the epidermis I almost said epithelial ha. epidermis um, and how we're constantly shedding skin and that no, we are also always getting new cells. So we took some sandpaper and some chalk and we rubbed the chalk on the sandpaper and watched it fall into another sheet of paper and we just discussed how awesome it is that God has made it so that our cells are constantly re rejuvenating and that our bodies can heal itself and can replenish ourselves. So that was what we did for science. Uh, for review, we did our Rockets game today, which was really fun. Uh, they beat me really good. And uh, they really enjoyed beating me today. So that's what we did for week five. It was a great day today. We had a lot of energy. So I'm going to try to manage that a little bit better next week. But I love uh, that they're excited to be there and that they are talkative and full of thoughts and ideas. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you next Tuesday, week six. I can't believe it. All right. Bye, guys.